my gosh. And we're gonna light it on fire, and then we're gonna turn it. It's purple. Okay, ready? And... Whoa! The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna line our glasses up like so. And then we are gonna pour water to this one. We're gonna pour water into this one, into the center glass as well. And we're gonna add a few drops of our blue food coloring on this side. And then on this side, we're gonna put some red food coloring over here. One of the things that you're gonna to wanna to do also is possibly have like a little tongue depressor or something to be able to stir the water so that way it gets evenly dispersed in the glass. So that's what I'm doing right now. And we can turn it over on this side. We'll just make sure that the red and the blue are about the same consistency. Now, what we have to do is take our paper towels and we have to fold them to make little tubes for them. We're gonna roll it, roll it, roll it, and roll it. So we've got a little bitty tube like this. Then we are gonna place this into the water on the red side. We are gonna place it into the water on there. And as you can see, it's already starting to come on this side. So we're gonna do the same thing over here. We're gonna see what happens. Ooh, look, it's moving pretty fast. Now this is showing how a tree absorbs water through the tubes that go all the way to the top of the tree. So it's slowly but surely moving and you can see the red and the blue starting to come over. Oh, it's made it all the way down there. Wow, look at that, it's purple. We're gonna make a cloud in a bottle. Okay, so let's get started. First thing we need to do is get our materials. We need some rubbing alcohol, a funnel, a cork, an air pump, and a bottle. Now let's send it off to my assistant, Stu and Brooks, and see if they can make a cloud. Thanks, Glenn. Okay, today we're gonna show you how to make a cloud in a bottle. So first, we're gonna make our own sort of seal that we're gonna pump from. So I'm gonna do that by putting the cork onto the bike pump and adding our putty in between the needle and the cork. Then we're gonna take our rubbing alcohol and our funnel, and we're gonna wanna coat at least the base of the bottle in rubbing alcohol. So not too much, but you need at least a good amount. We gotta coat the bottle as much as we can in the rubbing alcohol. Okay. Now it's time to get pumping. I'm gonna pump it up about 20 to 40 times. Okay, ready? And... Whoa! I wonder why that happened. Glenn, can you help us out? So what we did there was put pressure in the bottle by pumping it up. When we took off the cork and released all the pressure that we had built up, the gas inside rapidly expanded. This expansion causes the rubbing alcohol vapors in your bottle to cool off very quickly and to condense into tiny little water droplets. All right, for this experiment, we have a bowl full of dry ice, a spoon and a fork, some dish soap, a bowl full of soapy water with a string. So what's the creepiest noise that you've ever heard? Creaking of an old door or maybe an animal howling out in the woods? Oh! It's hard to beat the screaming of this dry ice when you try to touch it with metal. Have a listen. Whoa, what a crazy sound. The reason the metal screams like this is because the dry ice is made of carbon dioxide and it is vaporizing right now, turning it from a solid into a gas.
As you can see, it's quite satisfying seeing the smoke flowing out mysteriously like a proper science experiment should. Be careful if you're doing this one at home for reasons that you're about to see. As the soap goes in, it begins to coat the ice vapor, forming a bunch of little foggy bubbles. And if you want to add some style to your dry ice mixture, why not add some color? Low in the dark fluid can do the trick. To make a large bubble, pour soapy water into a bowl with dry ice on the bottom. Take a piece of cloth and rub soap around the rim of the bowl. Then, run the piece of cloth along the top of the bowl, forming a large bubble that will slowly expand as the vapor from the dry ice continues to grow. This dry ice is just the frozen solid form of carbon dioxide, the same air that we breathe out when we exhale. The wonders of science are truly all around us every day. It's time for a very dangerous and very hot experiment. Using only basic supplies, we will be creating our very own miniature fire tornado. Fire whirls or fire tornadoes, as they are sometimes called, can be most commonly seen in the wilderness during wildfires. If fields or forests are on fire, the heat rises up and creates what is known as an updraft. When the hot air currents begin flowing upwards, they carry the flame with it high into the sky, making it look like a twisting, turning tornado of fire. Any fire world is made out of an inner core that is fueled by a twisting jacket of air and wind surrounding it called a vortex. Even though we mostly see them during wildfires, fire worlds can range in size from massive to very tiny. We have a Lazy Susan, some isopropyl alcohol, a ramekin, filled with a paper towel that has been wadded up, and everyone's favorite, our trash can. So now that we understand what a fire wheel is, it's time that we make our own. We begin by preparing our Lazy Susan and placing our fire protection tray on top of it. We will put the bowl that will hold our fire on top of that and fill it with fuel. That is because a proper vortex cannot be formed without our mesh cylinder. So we put our mesh trash can on top and spin the Lazy Susan and voila, a spinning flame, our own very menacing fire whirl. Now, to begin this experiment, we're gonna take our ramekin that's filled with alcohol and has a paper towel in here. We're gonna put it on our Lazy Susan and we're gonna light it on fire and then we're gonna turn it and see if it creates a fire whirl. So let's see, here we go. Mm. This is not the fire whirl that we were expecting. So we're gonna add the trash can and see what happens. Fascinating to watch, isn't it? See how the flame twists and turns around the current of air spinning around it, regardless of which direction you turn it? This is the exact same principle by which the huge fire whirls are created. And if you had a much larger source of fuel, you might just burn down your whole town. We are going to observe what happens to an aluminum can when it is placed in hydrochloric acid. So for decades, aluminum can manufacturers have actually placed a plastic lining inside the can. And really the reason behind this is to protect the beverage from interacting with the actual aluminum and giving metallic flavors 
to the beverage inside the can. We're going to dip this soda can in hydrochloric acid, let it sit for a little bit, and allow the aluminum and the hydrochloric acid to react. You might see some bubbles, and the reason for that is because of the hydrogen gas that's being produced from the hydrochloric acid. Now, over time, once the hydrochloric acid reacts with the aluminum and the aluminum turns into aluminum chloride in our mixture, what will happen is we're gonna start to see that plastic fill. Today, we're going to be using hydrochloric acid. This is extremely hazardous, so please handle this with care. An aluminum can. Now, this has already been sanded with sandpaper, and the reason for that is there's something in the ink that also protects the coating of the aluminum. A cup, or really a beaker, or any type of container that can hold the can in place with the acid. We just need a little bit because this is a very concentrated solution. And then we are going to dilute it with some water. Let it swirl it around for a little bit. So if you look closely, you can start to see this fizzing. And what's happening here is you can see hydrogen gas being produced. Now the liquid that you're seeing here is actually not going to be hydrochloric acid over time. Instead, it's going to be aluminum chloride. So we're gonna continue to let this sit for a little bit. Oh my gosh. So in this instance, it appears that I may have diluted the acid a little too much. So when that happens, we can just add a little bit more. Now notice how you're seeing bubbles forming and we've got some what looks like some sort of steam coming out. That's actually from the hydrogen gas. When the aluminum reacts with the hydrochloric acid, what's formed is aluminum chloride and hydrogen gas. So the bubbles you're seeing is actually hydrogen. It is really hot. Uh, the reaction is an exothermic reaction, which means heat is going to be released. So you can see that plastic film that's left behind after the aluminum has reacted with the acid. Okay, now if we were to let this sit for a little bit longer, uh, we would be able to get all of the aluminum really out. It also depends on what type of soda can you're using. So perhaps if you used a bigger soda can or a different brand of soda, that you also might see a different interaction. What you saw here was the aluminum coming off of the can and leaving the plastic behind, and that's why we're seeing the plastic. For more exciting science experiments, make sure to follow Expulsion Science.